Hi Chemistry Lab. For my final video, I would like to detail for you how to use the rotary evaporator. This illustrious machine behind me. Or rotovap, as it is affectionately known. This machine's basic purpose is to separate a volatile solvent from the liquid or solid solute that is dissolved within it. So we are going to separate this acetone from the yellow compound dissolved inside. We could wait for this to evaporate, but that's tedious. So we have the rotary evaporator to do that for us. The way this machine basically works is by pulling a vacuum from an aspirator through the machine, which lowers the pressure on the inside. This makes it easier for the vapor pressure of the solvent to match the atmospheric pressure, which is decreased. And when that happens, the substance boils. Let's go over some of the machine anatomy. This is the aspirator. It looks just like a sink faucet with an attachment. What it does is the force of the water being pushed out pulls a vacuum through this tube and to the machine. That stopcock has to be facing down in order for the vacuum to be pulled through the machine. This vacuum fills this cavity and down to the bump trap to where our flask will be attached. Down there, we have a water bath. Why would we have a water bath? Well, when a substance boils, it is the highest energy molecules that are being jettisoned to become a gas. Thus, as these higher energy molecules are pulled off, the temperature of the solvent decreases. That is because temperature is basically the average kinetic energy. And if we're losing all the high kinetic energy compounds, the overall temperature also drops. So in order to keep that temperature constant and speed up our evaporation, we have a water bath there to make sure the flash doesn't cool down. Then the last component is the cold finger that drains into the solvent waste trap. Now, when we pull off that solvent, acetone or methylene chloride or whatever it might be, remember this vacuum is getting pulled up to the sobcock and through down to the sink. We don't want that to go down the drain. It's wasteful of solvent that can sometimes be reused, and it is illegal and a pollutant. So we have what is called as the cold finger. The cold finger is basically full of a solvent that does not freeze at or below negative 77 degrees Celsius, which is the point at which dry ice sublimes. So I have chosen ethanol. A lot of people choose acetone, but I think ethanol smells better. And what we have to do is add dry ice to that cold finger. I have here some dry ice I'm going to add. Watch how violently it bubbles from just one piece. So don't go dumping a whole shovel full in there because it'll spout over the side. Just add it piece by piece, slowly. If you add too much at once, watch what happens. The solvent splashes over the side. No! <laughs> this is not what we want to happen. So add slowly. I'll give it a little bit. Add more. It seems that the violent bubbling of the dry ice has ceased, which means that the ethanol on the inside has reached the negative 77, 78 degrees that it needs to. 
That means I'm ready to rotovap. I have here my flask of acetone with a yellow solid dissolved inside. There's a problem with this flask. I filled it too high. And that's because I want to demonstrate to you what will happen if you fill a flask too high. It'll do something called bumping, which is a violent boil which will shoot solvent and soluble light into the machine. That is why we have what is known as a bump trap. And even though that bump trap will protect the machine from your solute, you still can lose or dirty your solute. So what you want to do is fill the flask to less than halfway full. Right? This is way too much. And you'll see why. I'm going to affix the flask to the bump trap with a blue clip and raise the water bath to touch the flask. 